ಕವಿಂಕವೀನಾಮುಪಮಶ್ಚವಸ್ತಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪದಾಣಶ್ಚಿನ್ಮಣ್ಣೂದಿಸ್ಸೀದ ಸಾಧನ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಗುಣಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾವತೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿತ್ಪಿಶಾವಹೈ ಹೇ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಮಹೋದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾವನಿ ಭಗಿನಿ can you chant this shloka the display on the screen vijay lakshmi r bagini namaste mahodaya namaste kanmanya kanmaya pakshe akarmani cha kanmaya ಸಬುದ್ಧಿಮಾನ್ಮನುಷ್ಯು ಸಂಯುಕ್ತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರ್ಮ ಕೃತ ಲಲಿತಾ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರನ್ ಭಗಿನಿ ಸರ್ವೆ ಸಾರಂಭಾ ಕಾಮ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪ ವರ್ಜಿತ ಶ್ರೀಲಾಶಿಂಡೆ ಕರ್ಮಫಲಾಸಂಗಂ ನಿತ್ಯತೃಪ್ತೋ ನಿರಾಶ್ರಯ ಕರ್ಮಣ್ಯಭಿಪ್ರವೃತ್ತೋಪಿ ನೈವ ಕಿಂಚಿತ್ ಕರೋತಿ ಸಹ ಕಾಶ್ಮೀರ ಭಗಿನಿ ನಿರಾಶೀರ್ಯತಾತ್ಮರ್ವ ಪರಿಗ್ರಹ ಗುರುಮೂರ್ತಿ ಮಹೋದಯ ಲಾಭ ಸಂದುಷ್ಟ ಸಂತವಾದಿ ವಿಮತ್ತರ ಲಾಭ ಸಂತುಷ್ಟ ಬೈ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯೂ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಸಂತುಷ್ಟ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಸೊ ಯದುಶ್ಚ ಲಾಭ ಸಂತುಷ್ಟ ದ್ವಂದ್ವ ಅತೀತೋ ವಿಮತ್ಸರ ಸೊ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಡಿಡೇಟ್ಸ್ ಯದುಶ್ಚ ಲಾಭ ಸಂತುಷ್ಟ ದ್ವಂದ್ವ ಅತೀತೋ ವಿಮತ್ಸರ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಲಾಭ ಸಂತುಷ್ಟ ಸಂತ್ವಾತೀತೋ ವಿಮತ್ಸರ ಸಂಯಾಸಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಆಪೋಸಿಟ್ ದ್ವಂದ್ವ ತೀತ ದಿ ಆರ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ 
dualities because sometimes you may have dukkha you may have shuka you may have uh, sorrow you may have happiness you may have sadness happiness you may have pain you may have pleasure okay you may have uh, cold you may have warm so you have all these kinds of changes are always going to be there in our life we are going to experience those kinds of changes which may be external to us like the temperatures etc and internal to us emotionally like happiness and sadness you know all those kinds of things are going to be there and these people they are just beyond that beyond dvantva atitaha beyond the dualities opposites and then they are going to be happy with whatever comes to them it is not that they are going to be craving for that but yadischa labha santushtah it it comes to them they are very happy about this okay and next day it does not come to them they are not sad because of that today i had a wonderful uh, experience i went to my office there was traffic signals everything was beautiful i was able to reach in half an hour time happy tomorrow i am stuck for one and a half hours in traffic i am not going to get myself bogged down with that okay so not jump because one day something is good then get bogged down the subsequent day so they are beyond, beyond these dualities they accept dualities as they come and the next important thing is vimatsara hai they do not have jealousy in this case we talked about the six enemies okay uh, that is kama krodha lobha moha mada matsarya so this means this the person who is a sanyasin has got to be ensuring that he understands the six enemies that is there with him and then he is able to keep them off and then sama siddha va siddha cha he is going to be equanimous in terms of uh, the results in favor of him in favor of what he wanted or results not in favor of what he wanted siddha asiddha okay if he is with, the, with these kinds of attitudes though he may be engaged in action kritva api nani badyate those things are not going to bind him when you are not bound by your actions then you are not bound you by the results when you are not bound by the results you are not bound by attachments to the results when you are not bound by attachments to the results then you don't earn papa punya so this karma has got no effect in terms of you that is the understanding that we had but here in this shloka the most important thing is that you may have to understand those six uh, enemies shat tripuho i think somebody talked about it few classes back also this kama krodha lobha moha mada matsarya is something that we need to be conscious about in terms of uh, what situations are triggering these kinds of quality these kinds of behaviors in us and then ensure that we are able to keep a check in terms of all these kinds of things and yes only talk about jealous here jealous is that when somebody is getting something we become unhappy when somebody is happy we become unhappy jealousy means thereby a new car you become unhappy so that is jealous so he is he has taken only one of them vimatsara uh, you should not have uh, jealousy but we have to look at all the six enemies okay now we will further move forward vijay lakshmi ar bagini gata sangasya muktasya मुक्त शीलाशिंदे भगिनी समग्रमीयतेचरत कर्म समग्रम प्रविलीयते 
यत कर्म समग्र प्रवीयते यत कर्म समग्र प्रवीयते ुरमूर्तिमहोदयाचरत कर्म समग्रम प्रवीयते चेत विजयलक्ष्मीयते शीलाशिंडे भगिनी मुक्त ज्ञानवस्थित चेत यत कर्म समग्र प्रवीयते गुरमूर्ति महोदय मुक्त ज्ञानवस्थित चेत स्पिरीचुअल जर्नी ई बी के खर्म योगी From Karma Yoga, he want he had uh, got the jnana because after uh, Amta Karana Chuti he was able to get the jnana. So he has now got the jnana. Jnana means that he is a Brahman. The self in him is the Brahman. Once he understands that he is a jnani, okay, and then he also understand that he is not a doer. He is only a witness consciousness. He is a Brahman himself, witness consciousness. He is not a doer. What is being done is only the body mind. Uh, senses complex, so that is a person who is a jnani. Okay, now when you look at the progression of this particular person, this person was initially a kamya karmi. I believe, I believe that everybody would have been a kamya karmi. He would have been doing actions with the result in return. So initially they all study. If you look at the way most of us are continuing to do karma with a intended result, we do think that we want to have some result, so we do karma. Uh, maybe you know employment or education or growth or material life everything we have got a kind of a 
Kamya Karmi only. We want something to be got in return. Okay, even those people, when they are going to do some kind of uh, religious practices, they pray to God that some of their sankalpa that they do, maybe for gaining some material benefits or some kinds of good events to happen mm -hmm. in the house or whatever needs to be done, they pray to such kinds of devatas and then do those kinds of rituals expecting some kind of phala in return. So they are all Kamya Karmis. So Kamya Karmis are very clear that they are worldly people. They are good people only. Worldly people try to ensure that they are able to get riches out of the world for their own happiness and they feel that is the happiness. They are still not able to understand the limitations of the happiness that they have. They realize only after some time of getting what they want, that there is limitation on that they want something different. So they are Kamya Karmis. From Kamya Karmi, then uh, people get into spiritual uh, learning. So when they get into spiritual learning, then some of these teachers, scriptures, teachings and scriptures, etc. tell that you need to have an attitude of doing karma. You Karma bala is something which is not in your hand. Karma Bala has got to have, has got a hand of Ishvara also. Ishvara is a Paladata. So you do what is to be done and what is coming back to you, you accept that with happiness. Do not crib on what you are getting as a Pala and accept that. So that is going to be the situation of a Karma Yoga, Karma Yogi. So he does Karmas, Kartavjam, kar whatever needs to be done, he does it. And then the Karma Pala, whatever is coming, he accepts as a Prasada of God and then he does, goes on. So when he is in a journey of spiritual spiritual journey, when he is a karma yogi, he has got lot of practices. Like if you look at that way, if all of us are karma yogis, we have got some practices now. Every day we sit for one hour, try to understand four or five slokas of Gita, try to not only chant, but also try to understand the high level meaning of what does it say. And uh, we are also contemplating at the back of our mind, how do you think that these things can be utilized for ourselves? What does it make sense? Does it make sense that uh, the purpose of life is beyond what I have been thinking so far? Is there a different kind of purpose that I need to devote my remaining life? So all these kinds of thought processes have come in because you are now in a spiritual journey and we are in a karma yogic kind of a thought process is coming to you. So in this process, there could be a lot of sadhanas that we may be doing. One sadhana is coming to the class, sitting over here for half an hour, one hour, looking at the slokas, looking at the meaning that is being discussed. And then some of you may also do additional work in the evening, looking at some of the lectures, seeing some of the lectures or reading something more to understand what it is. Somebody was talking to me about silence, what Ramana Maharishi was talking about silence being very, very important. So all, your mind is starting to drift into some kinds of understanding more and more of spiritual uh, leaning. That's what is happening. So when you are in the sadhana process, when you are a karma yogi in a sadhana process, you do a lot of such kinds of sadhanas. You may be doing a yajna, you may be doing a sloka, you may be doing an abhisheka, you may be going to kshetra adana, but you have got an attitude of karma yogic attitude that you are doing it for your atmaj, for your antakarana chutti. Okay. Then assume that a person after the antakarana chutti, he was also able to get jnana. That is, he was able to understand it very, very clearly that he is the self, he is the Brahman himself. So then what happens is that he has become a Jnani. So all these days he was a Karma Yogi. Now he has become a Jnani. Say like he has got enlightenment. One Buddha got enlightenment out of the people tree somewhere. He got enlightenment. So just because the day he got enlightenment, from that day, does it happen that he is going to be totally different, that he is going to be doing different activities? No. He will be continuing to do the same activity that he was doing earlier also as a part of his sadhana in spiritual journey. So, the only thing is that for him, Gata Sangasya, Muktasya is a person who has a jnani. Gata Sangasya, all his attachments have gone away. Attachments for what? Attachments for karma pala has gone away. And we also saw yesterday, uh, Sarva Parigraha, he does not have an attitude of possession. He, possessions is another important, he is willing to give up all his possessions. So, he is Attachments towards possession, attachments towards karma pala, all those things are going away for him. Gata Sangasya, Muktasya, all these things go away. And then Jnana Avastita Chetasaha. Avastita means he is able to establish himself in the wisdom of knowledge in his own self. Chetasa, he can take it as his mind or in his own Atma. He is able to be dwelling in the Jnana which is there for him. 
and he feels he has already now come to the conclusion there is no need for him to go externally to get a peace of mind or happiness and he is going to be jnana avasthita he feels that i can just close my eyes i can get engaged in all kinds of activities but i am continuously establishing myself in the case of that jnana that i have got and the jnana has already told me that i am full there's no craving for me for any external things but still i keep doing all these kinds of things so he is a jnana avasthita chetasaha so anything that he is doing externally is not going to impact him he might be doing a teaching like today swami ji sometimes will be giving a lecture classes they will be doing it as a, a daily routine they may be doing some kinds of meditation they may be doing some kind of seva they may go and uh, dis- give a lecture to some people so all these things they do but they do, do not impact him at all because they are jnana avasthita chetasah and whatever they do yagnaya acharatah they do it as to they are acharatah they are uh, uh, abiding by doing a yagna anything is a yagna when they chant something it is a vak yagna when they meditate tapo yagna so everything that they do physically mentally what they were doing before the sadhana they continue to do the yagnaya acharatah they are doing it for the sake of yagna they are abiding in all those things in when you are doing like that that whatever they do they think it is a yagna and they are doing it yagna means what not for me i am offering it i am offering it to the fire when you offer it to the fire what you don't get anything some people offer habi some we we'll talk about in the next shloka so when you offer it as a yagna it is no more belonging to you even when you are doing so offering in the fire you say indraya swaha you offer something for indra indraya for indra swaha i am offering in the agni indraya idam this is for indra na ma ma it is not for me so you have got the attitude that it is not for me it is for somebody else so you have already got the attitude yagna ya acharata hai karma you are doing a karma also what happens is that karma samagram pravilyate in that process whatever actions you are doing and the results of action everything gets pravilyate everything gets resolved or everything gets dissolved everything gets melted away so you do all those things as gnani you do all the actions but you feel that there is nothing that you need to get from the external world you are always established in your own so jnana avasthita chetasah yagnaya acharatah you are doing everything it is for the, whatever you do you feel that you are doing a yagna yagna means for the loka kshemam you are doing it and then what happens is that the karma the karma phala the papa punya associated with the karma phala everything praviliyate all those things get dissolved all those things gets melted away because he is in the particular state of understanding himself that he is the brahman so these people have understood that they are the aham brahmasmi is the understanding that they have okay we'll go to the next shloka which is very very interesting shloka lalita ramachandran bagini <coughs> yes now brahma panam brahma havi hi ब्रह्मार्पणं ब्रह्महवी ब्रह्मार्पणं ब्रह्महवी ब्रह्मात्नो ब्रह्मनाहुतं ब्रह्मात्नो ब्रह्मनाहुतं ब्रह्मात्नो ब्रह्मनाहुतं ब्रह्मार्पणं ब्रह्महवी ब्रह्मात्नो ब्रह्मनाहुतं ब्रह्मार्पणं ब्रह्महवी ब्रह्मात्नो ब्रह्मनाहुतं ब्रह्मार्पणं ब्रह्महवी ब्रह्मात्नो ब्रह्मनाहुतं नेक्स्ट कृष्णा पावनी भगिनी नमस्ते महोदय ब्रह्मैवतेन गन्तव्यम् ब्रह्मैवतेन गन्तव्यम् ब्रह्मैवतेन गन्तव्यम् ब्रह्म कर्म समाधिना ब्रह्म कर्म समाधिना ब्रह्म कर्म समाधिना ब्रह्मैव तेन गन्तव्यम् 
ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना कैश्मीर भगिनी ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मनाहुत विजयलक्ष्मी आर भगिनी ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना नेक्स्ट वीना फानी श्री भगिनी फर्स्ट लाइन टू टाइम्स गुरुमूर्ति महोदय ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मनाहुत गुड नेक्स्ट शीला शिंदे भगिनी सेकंड लाइन टू टाइम्स ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना कृष्ण पावनी भगनी बोध लाइन वो ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना गुड नेक्स्ट ललिता रामचंद्र भगिनी ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हरि ब्रह्म ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना लक्ष्मी देवी भगिनी ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्मा कर्म सधीना ललिता रामचंद्र भगिनी ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्म ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना कैश्मीरा भगिनी ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना मीनिंग ऑफ दिस डिस्कस थ्री डिफरेंट थ्री डिफरेंट डिस्कशन ऑन द सेम स्लोक the first thing is that you know there is always a ritual that is being done you you will look at there are many yagnas are being done where they will make a big uh, uh, homa kunda we call uh, homam in south india in north india they say havan so they make a big homa kunda and then in the homa kunda is some yagna is done so now they may offer some rice they may offer some dravya they may offer some ghee so that's what is being done and then they got some kind of sankalpa and then they offer maybe indra maybe soma maybe varuna maybe various kinds of gods they offer even in the time of shrad when the people are doing shrad for the elderly people that time also such kinds of yajna is being done and they do it 
and in one of in our culture the fire ritual is supposed to be very very important okay and a person when he, he is given yajna uh, bhavita or upanayanam the day he starts his samita dana he starts first offering samit samit is the twig which is got for the people tree from that time onwards every day he does a samita dana twice a day and then the same fire is not extinguished the same fire is continued as a practice till he gets his marriage in his marriage the same fire is converted into a kind of a aupasana uh, aupasana is the first time they will do a fire ritual at the time of wedding marriage so from samita dana becomes aupasana and the same fire will be continued further throughout the life of this particular vyakti and aupasana will be done morning and evening that fire is being kept alive and then when the person passes away the same fire is used to even light the fire by the children by the son of the individual so he is called agrihotri who has been worshiping agni right from the time he was initiated into yajnobavita rupanayana so that is also one of the practices that was there and i know some of my own relatives who had done this till their uh, death they were doing it for years together keeping alive the same fire and doing it regularly day in and day out morning and evening and they will not eat anything outside today also i have got one friend in bangalore he works for one of the multinational companies but he is hardly 40 years old and he does it every day he says i am agnihotri so i will not eat he comes for many functions in our family but he says i am agnihotri i do not eat anything outside i'll go and eat whatever is there a small amount of food in my house okay so we have a fire ritual where the fire is being kept and then the rituals are being offered okay but now if you look at that way in the kesha chandogya upanisha there is a vakya maha vakya that says sarvam kalavidam brahma that means that sarvam brahma everything that you see whether it is jada or chetama living or non living living or sentient or insentient everything that we see is brahma sarvam brahma kalu indeed kalu is indeed sarvam kalavidam brahma is a vakya you find in the kesha chandogya upanisha tattvam asi aham brahmasmi so we have lot of these kinds of uh, mahavakya we say that the brahmam is everywhere there's also a nice uh, song uh, sarvam brahmamayam there's one nice carnatic song i think if you are able to google it out you'll be able to get this song and listen to that sarvam brahmamayam and then there's also another song brahmam vokate para brahmam vokate so there are lot of such kinds of things where this brahmam has been talked about so the jnani is a person who knows that the inner self that he has is brahmam and anything and everything that he sees is a brahma brahman that is a manifestation of god it is only god he sees in everything so now when that particular jnani is also continuing to the fire ritual look at his uh, attitude of brahmarpanam so brahmarpanam means in the agni that yajna kunda that he is doing brahmarpanam the uh, in this case you can take the small ladle a spoon that they have for putting we are the havis that ladil he says is brahma brahma arpanam then he is having a havis havis is sometimes havis is also rice sometimes they also have ghee in that and then offer the ghee or the havis that is offered is also brahma brahma arpanam that ladil is the the, the the means by which i am offering is a brahmam the one that is offering brahma havihi where i am offering i am offering the agni brahma agna brahma agno the agni is also brahma the ladle is brahma the geed and the habis i am offering is brahma brahmam the agni to which i am offering is brahmam brahmana hutam the person who is i am offering i am also a brahma hutam is the person who is doing the oblation then by doing this what happens brahmaiva tena gantavyam again all these things help me to again reach the same brahma brahma karma samadhina i find everything is brahmam everything is brahmam whether it is a offering whether it is a spoon whether it is a ghee whether it is a fire whether the person who is offering it everything is all brahma that is the attitude that we have so brahma arpanam brahma kavihi brahma akno brahma nahutam brahma eva tegana gantavyam brahma karma samadhina because he has already come to the situation to understand that he is a brahman himself he is not a doer he is a brahman he sees the brahman in him and everything that he sees he is not able to differentiate anything everything is a manifestation of brahma and that is the duty of our hindu culture also so if in a hindu culture we worship river we worship river as a god 
So that is Brahma for us. Many people will ask, why, what is this? Yeah, these people, Hindus, know they go in the evening and do a Ganga Harvi. So they make a laughing stock of that. But the real meaning is that we are able to see the manifestation of God in the nature. We see, worship the river. We worship the mountains. On Ayudha Puja or this, uh, what is that we call that, uh, Vijay Dashami day, we worship even the car. We Because the car is the one that is able to take care of our thing. We worship the scooter. We worship the refrigerator. We put some kumkum and chantan and worship. So we we are doing it. Uh, right from childhood, we have been doing it. And Vijay Dashami do, day we keep the books and worship that also. So that attitude is that we look at everything as manifestation of God. That is the real attitude. I think we may have to perhaps take it to the next generation and tell them that this is the attitude with which we all uh, uh, look at. Everything that we have is Brahman. Okay. So, in this particular case, everything is looked as a Brahman. Okay. Now, if you look at it, in many places, in some of the ashrams, some people might have gone for uh, uh, visiting some of the ashrams and taking some kinds of courses there. In many of the ashrams, okay, at the time of eating, they have this sloka chanted. Brahma, Panam Brahma, Habihi Brahma, No Brahma, Nagutam, Brahma, Ibadayanagam, Tabjam, Brahma, Karma, Samadina. Before eating, they chant this sloka also. So, what does it mean is that Brahma, Panam, the hand by which I am eating is Brahma, Brahma, Habihi, the food that I am going now eat is Brahma, Brahma, no, the fire that is there inside me, Vaishvara, Raha. That we discussed that about that in the 15th chapter also. Aham Vaishpana Robutva Praninam Deha Mahatibaya. Bhagavan will talk about that in the 15th chapter. Aham Vaishpana Robutva Praninam Deha Mahatibaya. Prana Bhana Samayukta Pasham Yannam Chaturvidam. He says that I am the fire in everybody, including animals, fire of hunger, fire of this thing. So, what are you? Brahma Arpanam. Your hand is sir. Brahma Arpanam. Brahma Havihi, the food I am eating is Brahma. Brahma, now that I am taking care of the, I am doing yajna to the fire that is there inside me as a Brahma. The hunger is a fire of Brahma inside. Brahma na I am the Brahman, I am offering it. Brahma eva tegane gamtam, by doing all these things, I am going to reach the same Brahma. Brahma karma samadhin, I see everything in the Brahma. So that is the attitude that which everybody chants this sloka at the time of having a meal. It's a good practice also to start this kind of a thing. That Brahma, Padam Brahma, Habihi Brahma, No Brahmana, Kutam. Just to think that everything is Brahma and then have a morsel of food. That is also a good practice that one can have. Then, if you look at uh, rituals, some of the people, they once the food is served, till all the food is served, they will not eat. Once everything is served, then they have a parishashma. You know, they have a purification, they say. They do that two times and then they start eating. Six five times each small small morsel of rice. Prana yasvaha, apana yasvaha, yana yasvaha, udhana yasvaha, samana yasvaha. And then sixth one they say, Brahmana yasvaha. Okay. So prana, apana, vyana, udhana, samana. Sixth one, Brahmana yasvaha. So they do that every meal they do it. Some of the families, people are still doing like these kinds of things. Once the food is served, immediately they, they don't take something and start eating. No. They will wait for the entire thing to be served, then they ensure that the ghee is also served, and then they do this, this called Shuddha, then they do this. That means the attitude is that Rana I have got to ensure that there is a I have there is a yajna I am doing, there is a life force in me that is prana. So prana yaswaha. There is one more life force inside me, apana, jana yaswaha, apana yaswaha. Then the there, Prana is the breathing life force, okay, which is not in our control. You right from morning, right from time a person is born to the time a person dies, they have the prana breathing. The Bhagavan is giving vayu, oxygen from outside. We continue to breathe. There's something which is triggering inside ourselves, which is Bhagavan, because of which we are able to take the breath. The moment we don't breathe, we are out. Okay, so that is a prana life force coming to us from outside. Brahman is coming and going every time. Prana is vaha. Apana is excretory system and reproductive things in ourselves. That is again a given God given thing. We cannot decide that you know excretion takes place. Uh, we have no control on that. That is another vayu we say. Pancha pranaya, that is another pancha prana. Vya, prana, apana, vyana is circulation. We got a blood circulation. We have no control on that. Right from the time you are born till the time the person is dead, vyana vayu, vyana is continuously circulating inside the body. Lymphatic system is circulating in the body. 
everything is calculated in the body. So prana, pana, vyana, udhana is the nervous system which is going to take everything to the brain system. All these kinds of commands and uh, senses, everything is going to the brain system for the system to operate. We have no control on that. When you touch heat, it will immediately say that this is hot. You can only prevent it from touching it, but the system, nervous system is continuously active always. Prana, apana, vyana, udhana, samana. That is a digestive system. Whatever you eat is going to be digested by this body. You have no control. Whether you are going to eat uh, chapati or you are going to eat uh, rice or you are going to eat whatever you may eat, that is the food that is cooked in the family and given to you. Some people may also, other kind of people may also have non-vegetarian food. That is all only at the input level. That's it. Beyond this, it is at the taste level, at the input level, somebody can say, I'm eating pizza, I'm eating pasta, idli, chapati, paratha, all these things. But beyond that, Bhagavan says, I am only cooking the food for you. Once it goes into the digestive system, he says, I cook the food for you. Pacham annam. I cook that food. And then I ensure that the nutrition that is required in the body is all managed by me. Whether you eat a non-veg or chapati or rice or sabji, anything, at the end of the day, they have got to be broken down into nutrients which the blood can absorb and the body can absorb. And that kind of transition of what is going inside, converting into the same thing for everybody is done by God. That is what is called. So we have this thing, prana, apana, jana, uda, samana. Brahmane. Then we also say there's a Brahman in me. Brahmane Swaha. That is the attitude that we have. We also have to understand that we not only do this when we eat the food, but when we are offering a, a naivedyam to God, we see the same thing. We say that Bhagavan is inside me, so I am doing Pranaya Swaha, Apanaya Swaha. I do it myself. When I do a naivedyam to the God, I do the same thing. Same thing I do and then say Pranaya Swaha, Apanaya Swaha, Vyanaya Swaha, Udanaya Swaha, which means that that Brahman and this Brahman are same. So that is the kind of tatparyam that we have in our culture. Culturally, we are doing this, but this is the meaning behind this. Okay. So that is the way we have to understand in terms of the ritual that is this is being chanted at many of the ashrams and even in some orphanages, some of the small, small orphanages in Tamil Nadu I've seen, before the food is eaten by the children, small, small children, they don't know the meaning of this, but they all say Brahma, Panam Brahma, Havihi, Brahma, no Brahma, Nahudam. And then only the warden will say, come children, you can eat, then the children eat. So this is the kind of attitude that we feel that everything sarvam kalavitam brahma. Then it is not only in the case of eating and uh, yajna. Now, for example, you, are, you, you go to a place and then you are listening to your satsang. When you are listening to your satsang, that is also, whatever he is doing is also yajna. Because the particular person is teaching. He is teaching with what? He is teaching with his mouth. Okay, that is Arpanam, that instead of, uh, instead of having a ladle, he is using his mouth for teaching it, Brahma Arpanam. Brahma Havihi, what is that he is offering? He is offering knowledge. Into what? Brahma no, for the knowledge of fire that you have inside you. Brahmana Hutam, the teacher himself is a Brahman. For what? The teaching of the Mahatmas is going to help us in terms of reaching into Brahma. Brahma Ivatyanagantavyam. So again, it is all Brahma. So we have to understand this particular sloka from these three perspectives. One is a sacrificial ritual that is being done, where everything is looked upon as a kind of Brahma. Second thing is even when you have a simple ritual like we do in terms of offering Naivedyam to the God, or we start taking the masala food, again we do the same thing that everything is Brahma. And even in any kind of interaction that you have, that is also Yajna. Teaching is a Yajna. The various activities that you start doing, if you start looking at it, you know, you have got an implement, you have got an action, you have got a doer, everything is a Brahman. Because it's also a Dharmic kind of thing that we are doing. So that is the kind of attitude that we need to have. So we say Brahma Arpanam, Brahma Havihi, Brahma Arpano, Brahma Navutam, Brahma Ivatena Gantavyam, Brahma Karma Samadhina. It's a very, very important sloka and uh, maybe... Uh, if you can memorize this and then chant it at the time of having a food, that will be giving a kind of an attitude to think that everything is Brahma. Whatever I have got today is Brahma. And when you see next time when some of them are chanting, you'll be able to understand and appreciate the meaning of that in a much better way. Okay? Yeah. Guru so, Murti Mahodaya. I think 13, 14. Uh, yes, madam. Okay, we'll take one more sloka. Daiva meva pare yajnam 
ಪರೆ ಯೋಗಿನ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಯೋಗಿನ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಯೋಗಿನ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಯೋಗಿನ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಯೋಗಿನ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸರೆ ಕಾಶ್ಮೀರ ಭಗಿನಿ ಕಾಶ್ಮೀರ ಭಗಿನಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾವ ಪರೇ ಯಜ್ಞ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾವ ಪರೇ ಯಜ್ಞ ಯಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಪತಿ 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 ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾವ ಪರೇ ಯಜ್ಞ ಯಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಪತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾವ ಪರೇ ಯಜ್ಞ ಯಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಪತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾವ ಪರೇ ಯಜ್ಞ ಯಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಪತಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಬೀಬಿ ಭಗಿನಿ ದೈವಮೇವರೇ ಯಜ್ಞ ಯೋಗಿನ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ದೈವಮೇವರೇ ಯಜ್ಞ ಯೋಗಿನ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ದೈವಮೇವರೇ ಯಜ್ಞ ಯೋಗಿನ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಬೀನಾ ಫಾನಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗಿನಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾವಪರೇಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಪತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಜ್ಞಾವಪರೇಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಪತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಜ್ಞಾವಪರೇಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಪತಿ ಶೀಲಾ ಶಿಂಡೆ ಭಗಿನಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಟೂ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ದೈವಮೇವಪರೇಜ್ಞೋಗಿಣ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ದೈವಮೇವಪರೇಜ್ಞೋಗಿಣ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಲಲಿತಾ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರನ್ ಭಗಿನಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಟೂ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಜ್ಞಾವಪರೇಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಪತಿ ಯಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಪತಿ 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 ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾವ ಪರೇಜ್ಞೋಪಜುವತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಜ್ಞಾವಪರೇಜ್ಞೋಪಜುವತಿ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಜ್ಞಾವಪರೇಜ್ಞ 
ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಮುಕ್ತಸ್ಥಿತೇತಸರತ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಮಗ್ರಂ ಪ್ರವಿಲೀಯತೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾರ್ಪಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಹವಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಹುತ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವ ತೇನ ಗಂತವ್ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಕರ್ಮ ಸಮಾಧಿ ದೈವಮೇವಾಪರೇಯಿನ ಪರ್ಯುಪಾಸತೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಪರೇಯ ಯಜ್ಞೋಪಜುಹ್ವತಿ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವ ವಿಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಫ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫೈ Uh, the meaning of the shloka is fantastic uh, yeah. three aspects of uh, that brahmarpanam yes uh, that is really a good shloka and it is used 